Well, off the top of my head, I'd say you're looking at a Boski, a Jim Brown, a Miss Daisy, two Jethros, and a Leon Spinks, not to mention the biggest Ella Fitzgerald ever. And, of course, you'll need Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. Would you like to learn from those that are taking their lives, their businesses, and their passions to the next level? Best-selling author of Speak Easy and master connector Lou Diamond is here to connect you to some of the most inspiring and amazing people on this planet. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome, everyone, to another spectacular episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond, and today on Thrive Loud, we have a theater performer, speaker, and best-selling author. He has created five household brands and made millions teaching coaches, speakers, and service-based business owners how to turn their life story and life experience into lucrative businesses that impact millions and make millions. Oh, I like that. In addition, he's got a smash hit one-man show called Good Enough. Not only is he good enough to be here on Thrive Loud, but he's great enough every single day. Thrive Loud listeners, I got Ted McGrath with us here. Ted, how are you today? I'm great, man. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Ted's coming to us from Clearwater, Florida. He's wearing a black t-shirt. He has much better hair than I do. Uh, (laughs) Here's what we want to do, Ted. Uh, You got some cool stories and cool stuff going on. I I like to do what's called the little rewind. I don't want to go all the way to the womb. It's very uncomfortable in there. I want to get to the point where the thing that you're doing now became your gig. Okay. So where do we start? That's what I'm asking you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, I I started in my professional career when I was 21, right? So I had no idea what I wanted to do, right? No, 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 no concept. And I got into the insurance business by default, the life insurance business. I actually walked off the elevator and, um, you know, I thought that I was going to a magazine for an interview and um, because I was, I'm a writer too. And so I walk up the elevator and I, I was thinking kind of life, you know, magazine, New York life was the name of the company I was going to interview with. And when I walked off, New York life happened to be an insurance company. It is so a very like, big one at that. Yeah, yes. pretty big, pretty, pretty big one. Right. So I'm like, so I walk off and the lady's like, what you, she's like, uh, Hey honey, are you lost? I'm like, yeah, I, I thought I was coming to a mag- magazine interview, like New York life. She's like, no, oh, sweetie, this is an insurance company. Uh, what's your name? I'm like, Ted McGrath. She's like, yeah, I got you down here for an interview. She's like, you still want to do the interview? I'm like, sure, I'll do the interview. So I walked in and then sat down with my uh, my soon-to-be boss. Um, and, you know, he asked me one question. He's like, who is Ted McGrath? And we became really close friends. We had like a two, three-hour interview. And, um, and it was amazing. And so uh, um, he hired me. And then he said, hey, you know, I believe you can do six figures your first year in this business. And I was dumb enough and young enough and green enough to believe him. And I I, I, for 12 months, I put my head down, uh, I went out and I cracked six figures. And that night at like four in the morning, you know, I'm on the kitchen floor and I'm overdosed from like a bag of cocaine, two pills of ecstasy, 15 vodka sodas, my soul's coming out of my body. And, uh, and you know, I'm dying. And, and the next morning I'm revived and I'm like, well, money didn't do it. Maybe I should do something different, you know, but that was my first year in the insurance business. Hmm. The, the, the world, the working world, and then making a realization that, okay, maybe that's not for you or running yep. through some real personal issues. Yep. Uh, help me understand when you kind of, whether the voice inside of you or another voice outside of you helped get you back on track and, and get you to follow maybe your passion more to what was better for what life you wanted to leave. Yeah. So, um, you know, so I, you know, at that point I figured kind of money didn't do it. Right. So I was like, well, you know, maybe success and status and power will do it. And, you know, I got an opportunity to, to get into management cause I was such a high producer. So I got promoted and, um, you know, for five years, I kind of just chased the partnership status. And when I was 28, I became one of the top partners in the company. And, mm-hmm. um, and I kind of had that question that a lot of people have, like, is this really all there is to my life? And, um, and I resigned at 28. 
And, um, and I moved out to California, you know, I was in Florida at the time and I moved all the way out to California. It's like, I'll be an entrepreneur. It'll be amazing. And I went out and I started up two businesses and within nine months, I wasn't passionate about them. Um, they're kind of failing and I was still partying and spending all my money. And so my house went into foreclosure, my car got out, towed out of the driveway, my motorcycle, and I'm sitting in my foreclosed house. I got my face in my hands and I'm like, what the hell do I want to do with my life? And that was the time where I realized, you know, I, I did have some skill sets. I had like eight, nine years of sales skills. And I, I was a leader in the company where I was training people on how to build businesses. And I was a good coach. And so that was the point where I realized, hey, I want to speak. And I just decided I wanted to build a speaking business. And, um, and I started to do seminars. Mm. Uh, and, you know, initially I bombed. And, uh, and then, of course, I built my seminar business up over time and built it really successful. And, you know, here we are. So, so here we are. Let, let's, let's, let's go through this uh, component. And one of the things that you do is that you help coaches and speakers and service-based business owners, solopreneurs thrive in their own business. How do you go about doing that? Yeah. So the first way I do it is kind of like uh, I have two brands. One's called Speak to Millions. Another one's called Message to Millions. I also have my one-man play where I play like 12 characters on the stage that's called good enough, but that comes from my whole life of never feeling good enough and, you know, chasing after the success and, and then eventually finding my dream. And so when I started to lead seminars, I was like, after a little while, I got really good at the speaking thing and I wanted to help other speakers. So in speak to millions, I help other speakers get booked on stages. I help them, uh, you know, lead their own live events and I teach them how to present, how to story tell, um, and all the things they need to do to be a speaker. So, um, my speaking business did great, um, you know, built it to seven figures, but realized it was really limited. Um, and this was nine years ago or so. And at that point, um, I was like, you know, for me personally, um, I want to get my message to millions of people and I really want to learn how to build a business online. So I started working to build my business online and, um, and, I, and I started to learn that, wow, I could advertise and put a dollar in and make $4 back cash in the same week. And so I just started to launch my marketing online and I used it to fill my seminars initially. And then I, I use it to fill my coaching programs as well. And then I just built it up and I kept hitting the gas, hitting the gas. And we spent a couple million dollars a year in advertising. And to me, it's a, it's a great freedom to be able to have a system to where I put money in. Uh, it brings in clients. My team gets to help them, coach them. And I get to do the things that I love, which is speaking, doing my play, producing content. Um, and I built a business around that. I want to talk about this play for a second, aside from the fact that it seems like you have a multiple dis multiple personality uh, situation going on. You the play, yeah, 12 different personalities. 12. I, I would love to Just hear know, It's all over the place, bro. I can't, I can't remember who I am in a given day. You know. Well, wait, <laughs> so, so, so let's hit this. Obviously, selling, performing, being on stage, connecting with people. I want to rewind a little bit. Um, did you ever, were you ever on stage when you were younger in, in school or in those formative years? That's a great question, man. Um, so I didn't start doing theater um, until I started my one man play about seven years ago and I wrote it. And, um, and that was my first play I did, I think about seven, eight years ago. Early on in my life, no, um, like, like in, in school, there's a few things I remember in the fifth grade, um, getting up to go do speaking and like kind of playing one of the Wright brothers, one of those guys who flew planes, you know, and like dressing up in like a costume and then giving this presentation. And that to me was fun. Like I was like, wow, that was such a good time. Um, it wasn't around people who did the arts. Mm. Um, in my town, a lot of doctors, lawyers, um, people like that, um, people in finance. Um, so I didn't, I didn't have an upbringing around that. Nobody in the family did the arts at all. And, um, and so I didn't know, like I was like a performer or a presenter really at a young age, I was more of an athlete. Um, did a, did a play like where I played Gandhi in like the school skit. And I thought that was really fun. But um, you didn't eat or speak the entire show. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it was like, I mean, <laughs> but I learned to at least be up there and have a stage present. Right. That's funny, dude. So, so it was like, I did that. And then, um, and you know, I, I went to Broadway and watched a whole bunch of shows like, but I never really liked it because it was very, um, I didn't understand a lot of the words and things they were saying, the history behind it. Um, and so, and then I learned to like it over time because I learned to like, hey, let me look up that definition and figure out what they're saying. So not until my, in my thirties, like um, did I, my early thirties, did I learn um, uh, that I liked theater. 
And, yeah. um, and that's when I started to write the play because I saw somebody else do a one man play. Yeah. I saw a guy by the name of Bo Easton do it. And I said, Oh, I want to do that. And that's what inspired it. You know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, and now I'll, I'll ask the question and then I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll just, we'll determine if it's interesting or not. Mm -hmm. The question is the art of performing, the art of selling, the art of speaking, the art of conducting your own business. Uh, is this all the things that are like the different hats you wear? Uh, is there one of those hats that you like wearing more than another? What a great question. Um, I love, yes, there is. Um, you know, I just, I love performing. I love that. And I do also love speaking. So there's two, they're different, right? Mm -hmm. So I just got back from Scotland. I did 14 shows in the course of three weeks and I got to meet people from all over the world. There's the big fringe festival there, the Edinburgh yeah. fringe, fringe festival. So it was like, it was very cool because I had people from uh, a different audience from Scotland and from uh, England and from uh, Australia and from the U S is 70 years old, 20 years old. So I got to go to a total, totally cold audience that knows nothing about me. Some people knew I was over there who were fans and came, but for the most part, it was 90% cold. And, um, and it was such an amazing experience, right? To go from somebody who leads big events, um, you know, and speaks for large audiences to go to, you know, a 50 seat theater right. and do it with a completely cold audience. And I loved it. Yeah. Um, I love to see that I could go in there where they didn't know anything about me and move them and 65 minutes later, get the feedback and impact their lives and have people who are 70 who came up to me or like, I hung on every word. And I was like, wow, I, I didn't know. Cause I foul in the, in the, in the play, I curse all the time. And it's all kinds of crazy shit I did as a kid. And to have that impact and to know that 20 year olds too had their own different experience with it. Mm. Um, that was really moving, man. And, uh, and so I love that impact that I get to see at the end of the show. And of course I love doing the characters and it's just such a fun thing. So I love that. And then I do love speaking because speaking, you get to kind of ad lib and, and be free for all and be totally free in what you're doing. And it has a different impact. So those are my top two. Mm -hmm. Marketing's probably on the bottom. Yeah. Um, it's only a means to a dream for me. That's all it is. And, um, and so I learned it because I wanted to be able to help other people live their dream and do the same for me. And then sales is above that. I do love sales. Um, so I, that has a place in my heart for just really teaching people, um, you know, how to sell. And I think it's important to sell people on their future and their goals and their dreams. So I like that too. When I ask this question, have you ever thought that all these superpowers that you had were always formulating, but they were just looking for a different outlet, but it's really all the same message. Yeah, it's a really good point. They, they, uh, it's so interesting you say you're great at, you're great at interviewing, by the way. So well, thank you. Yeah, you're really good at it. <laughs> so it, it's because you're very intuitive and I'm like, yeah, that's very much the case because, you know, they're, they're all, they were all kind of percolating these abilities. And so it is a different outlet. And so when I tell people I do a play, and they're like, Man, you, you an, I didn't know you were an actor. Like, I didn't know you had any history with this. But to me, it all matches up so well in the timeline of things because as a speaker, you tell a story on stage. Yeah. And so as you go through telling the story, for me, it was just natural. Let me play some characters and get up on stage and do it. Now, there's a whole lot more to that than a one-man play, but that's what I thought. And it kind of just made sense. It was like, I'm going to go do that. So it made sense to me. Yeah, so well, it really, it, it it totally fits. I mean, when you're marketing, you're messaging a story that you have to tell. When you're selling, you're selling one particular story in, in some form or fashion. When you're speaking, you're giving a message that's telling a story in a way that is trying to get a point or give people a lesson in a in almost a educational kind of way. And when you're performing, it's it's the, you know, the fun button of entertaining it, but tapping into all of it um, within yep. that. So, and this is this is what I want to ask you, Ted, there is an energy that is is created when you're connecting with people. Yeah. Um, and 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 you made a good point here. Uh, that 50 man show is a lot different than the, you know, the bigger stage speaking when you're talking yeah. to lots of people because you can actually get a better feel and connection for the people in the room. Uh, when you leave those events, when you leave those workshops you're working with your clients, or even when you leave those one on one people, are you are you making that connection in the conversations you're having? to the point that it, it that's the thing like it isn't about the money it isn't about the you know the the prestige of you know 
working for Life Magazine. I'm never going to let you li live that down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, w whatever it might be. Do you, do you think within the end of it, it is all about that connection that you're trying to make with people, whatever that message might be? Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's one of the reasons why I love the play. Um, you know, as a speaker, I'm always, you know, you're always selling something. Yeah. Um, at a seminar, like you're eventually going to sell something so they can use the tools and implement. And one of the things I, I love about the play is uh, um, it's over, it's over. And you just kind of get to sit there and, and go like, how did that move somebody? And the product is like, did they receive the message and how did it impact them? Now, to take it a step further, like um, I, I still think with art at the end, there should be something that they can take away, you know, knowing that I'm in the in the product in the business of providing information and how to, um, you know, at the end of uh, the play that we're turning into a feature film. Now we will have that somebody watches the film and then we'll give them some tools for their life. So um, so there's always something I want to give them also to continue to go on and implement, you know, yep. and I think that is one of the things that's great about making an offer and selling is that you give them tools to apply the theory of what they learned which is actually, you know, true education and knowledge, right? Yeah. So, um, so I like both, you know, and, and I do like the freedom to just get up and give a talk and, and you're done and, um, and you don't have to go linear, like, hey, this is next and this is next and I gotta do this. You're just kind of free and you do it and you see how it moves somebody. So it's special, you know? We, we didn't, I, I hopped over this, but more intentionally, but also ironically, purposely, uh, purposefully, and that is, in those times when you were, you know, maybe partying too hard or or looking for an outlet in certain different ways, maybe when you thought you weren't good enough, do you believe that what you're doing now not only kind of shows what how important it is to be good enough, but that's kind of what was building all those years, all those different things fighting out that it has turned into this new brand that is what Ted McGrath is today? Yeah, it's a good one. It's like, you know, I always used to say it's uh, all the partying and stuff. It's like you're trying to be in the evening at 12, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning and have those feelings and that's things that you really could do during the day. Hmm. And it's reckless at night versus during the day. You're doing something that actually um, gives you those, the, gives you the outlet, gives you the, the expression, gives you the feelings and it's good for you and it's good for others. So it's a big, big difference, right? Yeah. Um, and so now all my energy and my passion has a place to go. And, um, and that was a big, big uh, shift for me and change. And it's just something that uh, um, I want everybody to have, you know, um, because once you get into the business of doing things, not the business like services, but into the actual doing of something that you love, um, you realize, wow, I, I do have the ability. I am good enough to do this thing. And I'm fulfilled doing it. I'm helping others. Um, you know, I was on a, on a call yesterday with one of my clients. We had a whole group of them. And there was an artist that I inspired um, who's teaching other artists, you know, how to play the guitar and jam. And they come to him for lessons. And I said, hey, man, wouldn't it be amazing, like, if you helped these artists and you created, like, this year-long mastermind and, you know, the, the pricing was this that they had to pay. And, and, um, and instead of teaching them lessons, like they could actually form a band and that you could put them in front of an audience at the end of the year. Like, what do you think these doctors and lawyers and people who are coming to you really want? Like, they don't just want to play for playing sake. Even if they were to play for one pre person, like art's meant to be experienced by people. Yeah. And, uh, and he said that would be amazing. And he sold his first like $20,000, you know, package. And he broke down into tears as he was telling me this because he's like, man, as an artist, I was told I never could get paid for my work. I could never do this and never do that. And then his wife, who owns like a physical brick and mortar school, she was like, you know, changed with it, too. It was like her whole perception changed. So I like I feel like kind of my one of my purposes is to transcend the, the limitations and the boundaries of an industry and just go like, you just go for it, man. Mm. Like we're, we're here. We're here for however long we're here. And you might as well do stuff that's a little bit outside the box, at least maybe a lot outside the box. And just go for it and do something different. And I feel like stepping into becoming a performer at this point in my life and, and boldly doing that, I feel like it lends a little bit more inspiration to what I'm doing for people to go, wow, he's not speaking, he's not marketing, he's helping people create dream machines, which is what marketing's for, so they can go do their thing. 
and I want to take those bold actions to kind of be the one who goes, Hey, if, you know, if I can do it and this person can do it, you can do it too. You know, love it. Uh, I love asking guests this question, Ted. I want to see where this goes. Yeah. You have been thriving ever since, you know, you, you went to the wrong place to go interview at New York life. And <laughs> fucking classic by the way right um and in every aspect of your life and whatever you've been doing you've been recognizing when it's time to move on and how to keep moving on and upward which is why you're on thrive loud and which is yeah. why you thrive but yeah. as you know better than most yeah. we all have those days when we're not kicking on all cylinders and we're a little off our game yeah ted mcgrath what practice do you seek or maybe which individual do you seek out to get yourself back on the thriving track um it's a good question because you know it's it's not like building a business isn't easy, you know? I think people may watch from the outside and they see, oh, this person's making millions or they're doing whatever. But, you know, once you, I've done about 29 million in sales in the last three and a half years and, you know, we're doing well as a company. And it's like, as you grow, you just have different things you need to learn, you know? So for me personally, um, I'm always learning new things. So if there's somebody who's doing it better or there's somebody who's doing it smarter, I, I wanna seek out those people and I want to figure out, great, so like, you know, as you grow in business, like what's the best way to structure a company and organize a company, you know? Um, as I'm doing this play, like I seek out, you know, uh, people, I, my, my director, is, he was a, he's a nine-time Broadway star, you know? Awesome. So like I want, to, I want to learn from him. He was the phantom on Broadway, you know? So I seek out people who, are, who know these things in these areas that I want to know. Um, and I, and I somehow pull them in because I go for kind of crazy things, you know? My, my girlfriend's a great actress. And so I get to see what she's doing in that field in TV and movies. So I just kind of try, I just kind of set, I try to set a big vision, which I do. And then as I go forward with it and smash myself against the wall here and there, um, I learn and, but I pull in great people. Yeah. And that's kind of where I'm at in my life is like, okay, if I can surround myself with great people, um, you know, I can win. And also realizing at the end of that, all the, with all the people that I pull in, I'm still the leader. Like I'm the one who's boldly gone into different industries. So I make sure that I don't discount the leadership I have and the knowledge I have and the wisdom that I have because I may pull somebody in who's great in another field, but I've managed to be um, successful in a lot of different areas. So it's knowing to be the leader of your dream still while taking the input of people with the systems and the ideas and the prof professionalism they have but making sure that like I'm the one who's taking my own advice at the end of the day. And I think like that's it. the most important thing to thrive. Love it. Let's do the admin part of the show, Ted. Share with the listeners all the places people can find you, websites, URLs, social handles. We will put it on the show notes, but it gets way more engagement when they hear it from you. Yeah, um, you can go to uh, tedmcrathbrands.com, B-R-A-N-D-S.com. We just put up a new website literally yesterday. So you can go check that out and has all the different stuff on there. Message to millions, speak to millions, all good enough, all that. Um, so you can go there and then my Instagram handle is Ted McGrath official. Um, so you can go there and just check it out. You go to our website, there's a bunch of cool stuff that you can check out and, and some free gifts and things and, and snag it. Gosh, darn it. The community of Mavericks. I mean, my goodness. And, and look, like how good, look how good looking this guy is. <laughs> all the listeners will have fun, fun to get a yeah. chance to see. And we, got the, and we got this cool event coming up, Speak to Millions. So when you go to the website, click on Speak to Millions, yep. you'll see we're doing an event in December that's for speakers. So check that out as well. Well, look at that. I'm, I'm very apropos. I will do it as well. And it's in Tampa, which is always fine. Uh, are you ready to go down Fun Street, Mr. Ted McGrath? I am ready, man. Let's do it. Okay. So uh, even before I ask you what your all-time favorite movie, or in this case, maybe a favorite streaming show is, before I ask that question, I want to give a shout out to a one-man show that I just saw on Broadway, which, if, which just went off. And uh, I think they went for like if I'm correct on this, it was like 160 straight days. It was called Just For Us. It was with uh, comedian Alex Edelman, who I think writes for uh, Stephen Colbert. Wow. Um, freaking brilliant. It was one of the best, it, just a storytelling way of, of using comedy and his and many of his own idiosyncrasies. Go check him out, Alex Edelman. I will. Start with you. Yeah. Uh, he's coming on the show soon. So. Love it. All right. Uh, that being said, can you share with us one of your all-time favorite movies or streaming shows? Whatever. I, my fa my all-time favorite movie is Scent of a Woman. Okay. Al Pacino. And why does that movie connect so much with you? Um, one, his character is extraordinary. Um, I think the journey that his character goes through as like you know a general or a colonel in the army and a guy who was like you know at the top of his game but still not happy. Then um, you know he 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 goes blind. Yeah. You know. 
And then he, at, later in life, as he's washed up, you know, he meets a kid that he ultimately mentors a kid, but the kid kind of mentors him. And I feel like my, my relationship at 21 years old with my mentor, it kind of really, really relates to me of like that mentorship and that, that friendship that one would develop um, is really powerful. And, uh, and the guy's amazing, you know, he's just, it's an amazing performance. Uh, it's an amazing story. Yeah. Um, and it's beautiful because like what he really wants, you know, sent him when you can see how crass he is throughout the thing, but he's kind of a poet. Um, and also what he really wants is he just wants, he wants a woman, he wants a woman to love him and he loves women, this guy, you know, he, and I think <laughs> he loves women, right? The way he talks about it, but he really like people would watch it and go, ah, but he's really, if you watch underneath it, he loves women. He wants a woman, you know? Uh -huh. So, um, it's a, it's a really great story. And then I like stories that have court courtroom stuff, like, like, like you few good men was like that. So yeah. there's a courtroom thing at the end where there's this big moment. Um, so I just love it. You know, I watch it over and over again. I also used to watch it with my dad. So it's a cool one. Uh, Chris O'Donnell, it's under it's underrated how good he is in that role. <sighs> Amazing. To the, that scene in the uh, in the hotel room, you know, when oh. he, the, he tries to stop him from killing him is pretty good. And um, it's all good. Good, good stuff. Phenomenal. Good. He did phenomenal. In that. And and for good humor to watch it over and over again, just go back to the Thanksgiving scene, which is just absolutely the most incredible family, most uncomfortable family scene in your entire life. Oh, my <laughs> God. That's the best one, isn't it? <laughs> what, 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 he said, what, what he says to his, to his <laughs> nephew's wife or to his nephew is just absolutely. <laughs> so wrapped up in the sugar business. <laughs> I won't say the rest. You got the rest. Yeah. You got the taste of real honey. <laughs> that is Pacino down there too. That's awesome. <laughs> Ted, we're going to do the speed round here. Here's what I'm going to do. I want to ask you questions. I want the first thing that comes to your mind. Yeah. These are things that lift you up, that motivate you, that make you feel good, that basically make you thrive. Say you know? that again. Say it again. They are things that motivate you, make you feel good, make you thrive. I'm going to ask you one by one yeah. and you just get yeah. the first thing that comes great to your movie. mind. Great movie. A great movie. Oh, I'm, I didn't even ask you the question yet. I'm oh, just okay. Go ahead. The build up, right? Go ahead. I, I wouldn't do it that fast. That would be me. <laughs> All right, Ted. Of late. Yeah. A song that you love to listen to or one that pumps you up? Oh, my God. Um, well, there's one that I have right here that I was literally listening to this morning that I love. It's called You Say by Lauren Daigle. It doesn't pump me up. I just think it's very awesome. – I just love listening to it. It's very cool. Yeah, I know that song. Good yeah. song. Yeah. Favorite food that is not a dessert? Pizza. Favorite dessert? Oh, dude, I'm not a dessert guy, bro. Well, what would you have if you finished your pizza? What would you eat afterwards? <laughs> it could be like Dude, a carrot. Well, you know what? Back in the day, you know what I loved as a kid at an Italian restaurant? A cannoli. Oh, who wouldn't like that? That's, you know? not, that's not dessert. That's a meal in itself. You're good. That, that <laughs> you can have one. An activity you wish you did more of? Uh, motorcycles. An activity you wish you did less of? Um, mm, marketing. Oh. Ted McGrath, if I could snap my fingers and you could be anywhere in the world, where are you? Um, Italy. What part? Italy. Um, well, my, my girlfriend and I, we want to go to Florence next. So I've been there before. We love it. But we want to go. So I think we're going in December. I like it. Yeah. Everybody check it out. This guy's more than good enough. He's pretty freaking great enough. Ted McGrath. All the links, all the stuff will be on the show notes. Thank you so much for coming on Thrive Loud. Totally crushed it and continued success to you and all the millions that you're helping with everything you do. Thanks for having me, buddy. I appreciate it. It's great to be here. You got it. And to all our listeners out there, thank you for joining us. And until next time, keep moving onward and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. Listening to Thrive Loud with your host Lou Diamond. Check us out on the web at thriveloud.com and follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook at Thrive Loud. And check us out on the Good Pods app at Thrive Loud, where you can follow, listen, and connect directly to Lou and all of the Thrive Loud episodes. Thanks for listening.